uh, we're enough people now on the spaces for for Elon to jump in. Uh, the thing is, we have to be careful about what we say because, uh, like uh, Kim said, this is this is actually escalated quickly to to national security type of thing, and it's very tricky when you have uh, a Democrat president in the Oval Office uh, while. Uh, it actually concerns um, potential um, election manipulation. Yeah, and so I th I don't know if everything was exactly planned from 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 Elon, you know, to about these uh, Twitter files. But um, but uh, here's the thing: you have to consider things with different perspectives. Um, there's so you're going to of... censor the censorship conversation is the idea? No, no, no. Look, look. Uh, so let me just uh, finish this so that uh, hopefully we'll get Elon on. Um, I feel so I... essentially, <laughs> now we know that they are unreliable. It used to be that people know that the government lies, but then they don't connect the dots for some you know, human stupid reason that they say, okay, so do you, you, you ask a person uh, straight in the face, you say, do you trust the government? And they will say no. But when the mass media reports whatever the government wants you to, to accept as, as 100% truth, then for some reason, they believe it, okay? This is no longer true for, for a part of the population. This is basically changing, and the Twitter space is, is now going to be a broadcast of what actually people think, and that will be echoed to the, to the peoples, and therefore they will lose the control of the narrative, and this is the most important thing in society, because when you do not control what the, the broad mass psychology is, and again, I would point you to an interview I did with, uh, with Matthias Desmet, who, who wrote a, a book, uh, fact that they were, right? Is, I know for a fact that uh, Elon is listening to this uh, or his associates are. So I just want to say two things. Number one is please retweet these, um, these, uh, these spaces and uh, bombard Elon to come on board, so that he so that he does. Okay, and and if you if you have access, we're gonna be speaking now for a couple of minutes about the Twitter files. So I think it's only right, you know, for him who owns this platform to come on to come on stage and to talk about it, so that so that he can control what is being said because otherwise there will be speculations and there will be things that will not be able to, to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to be truthful. So that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to say, Mario. Um, and yeah, Yay. thank you very My much turn. for getting yep. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what's up, everybody? Richard Hart here to drop truth bombs on you guys. Look, you guys are all acting like something amazing happened here. You're not in the real game. Okay, and the real game, we're still totally censored everywhere. We can't see anything we want anywhere. I've been banned off YouTube four different times, begged the internet gods to unban me. Thank God they did, because there ain't no customer service email. You're literally one bot away from being completely removed from society. And so many people used to be able to speak publicly, they can't anymore. There was a bald dude. He used to talk about atheism and uh, being free from your... Parental control. I think his name was uh, Stefan Molyneux. Gone. He's gone. Alex Jones. Gone. Trump. Gone. Uh, this dude named Destiny. Gone. And there's all these other people that are just totally gone. You'll never hear from them again. That's, they don't exist anymore because they got canceled by all the people that are in power. So Elon bought Twitter to try and unscrew it. It's obviously sucked, which is why he had to buy it. It was good. He wouldn't have had to buy it and, tri and fix it. And then he discovers that, oh, look, censorship was happening. We know. We've all had, like, you're not allowed to advertise crypto on there. They don't accept the ads. You're not allowed to ex advertise crypto on Reddit. You're not allowed to advertise crypto magazines. You're not allowed to advertise anything except that hurts people. 
If you have an exchange that hurts people, they'll take your ads. If you have a casino, they'll take your ads. If you have sports betting, they'll take your ads. But if you have an honest cryptocurrency, they won't accept your ads. And so what you need to do to get your free speech back isn't to beg Elon to release papers of what is obvious, that they've been censoring the crap out of everything. The only unique or interesting part of which was the ruling party had some say in it, which is obviously a First Amendment violation. And by the way, my people, the hexagons, I, for you guys that don't know, I founded a cryptocurrency. My people are receiving government subpoenas asking them for records of every conversation they've had with other people about the product. Now explain to me how that's okay with the First Amendment, how that's not a chilling effect, how that is not a slap strategic lawsuit against public participation. The government is fishing expedition, asking people for their conversational records with me. Why, why is the government subpoenaing people's conversations with me? This is happening to me. So is anyone else on the call having people subpoenaed for their conversations? No, just me. It's not a fair world that we live in. And where's our redress? Where, where do we go to get fairness for this? So, so what I'm saying is the solution for all of this uh, censorship crap is to treat the utilities as utilities and break them up like you did Ma Bell when Ma Bell was a monopoly. We have now public facing communication services such as social media that are more important to us than the telephone systems ever were but they were smart enough to break up the telephone system and allow competition and allow greatness and allow excellence. And that's why you could buy DSL from 10 different providers, even though they go through the same central telecom switch. That's the reason you could get internet from 10 different places instead of just having AOL. So regulating these utilities will give you your freedom back. Giving you data portability will give you your freedom back. There used to be a hashtag on Twitter called net neutrality. And net neutrality meant that you had to be, you and your packets and your data had to be treated the same as everybody else's. And they couldn't decide to just like, oh, you want to send a Bitcoin transaction? Yeah, we're just going to put a 10% tax on that. Oh, you want to visit uh, a shopping website? We put a 2% tax on that. Because they could do that and they want to do that. Like the, the, these telcos want to monetize in any way they can. They don't want to be a dumb pipe. They want to act like they're an endpoint and try and start siphoning money off you. And so basically like even, even Twitter's trying to do this. Right, Twitter. Twitter wants to bang you for eight bucks, but it's so funny they don't really want to bang you eight for eight bucks. They, you can still use the platform at the same level, roughly, as someone that didn't pay the eight bucks. You're just paying for basically a hat, except they only have one color of hat, and it's called a blue check mark. So it's like a Team Fortress hat, except it's just a blue check mark. Which, by the way, I had to work a lot harder for. I didn't pay eight bucks for my blue check mark. I had to do it the hard way. So it's just I don't understand why everyone's so excited about a data leak that is something is obvious. Everyone, on, everyone well, that has well, a... Let me cut you off right there. We're... The reason people are excited about this data leak is, yes, it is confirming the obvious, but there's a difference between something being true to everybody and having evidence for it. That's the difference, right? That we haven't had any hard evidence that they were actually colluding. They could deny it, and there's no way to say, hey, you guys are lying, because Correct. that would be stipulation. That's the difference. That's why this matters. If we're going to, you know, when I say we, I mean, as in the public, is going to make this into an issue where they bring it into the court of law, you know, we, either through AG, some state, you know, from, from places like Florida or Texas, or if they're going to do it in Congress, they need evidence. They can't just be saying, you know, making assumptions and, and going on some fish, fishing expedition to make the claim that can easily be denied and shot down. That no, You know, no, no court is going to say, oh, yeah, that's totally legit because it seems to be true. No, there needs to be evidence, and Elon has provided the evidence. That's what we're excited about. Elon, so I Elon shouldn't can... ask you, Richard, uh, I shouldn't ask you how you feel about the EU's proposal uh, concerning Twitter in the next few months then. <laughs> yep. what, what, was the, what was the EU proposing? Uh, well, the EU is basically saying that they're going to prevent the, uh, well, they're going to they're gonna bar Twitter unless they do something about the potential yeah, uh, limitations on freedom of speech. No. But, you know, if I, if I remember EU correctly, concern. every big global war has come from that side of the world, so maybe they should chill out and, and let the free speech stuff work. <laughs> with, I'm just had. joshing with you, buddy. It's nice to see oh. you. How are you doing? Good. So, like, the the solution here is, by the way, Twitter is a private company. They could ban everyone named John legally. They're like, yeah, you're just not allowed to be named John. We don't serve John. Sorry. Bye. Bye, Johns. So the, the, only, the only way that this evidence is going to be useful is if the ruling party used it to stop people's First Amendment rights. And I'm well, telling and I you. Think, I think the, there, you, there you have it, though, Richard. And I'm speaking to you as someone who worked for Biden. 
years ago and blew the whistle and came forward. I just had, I, I don't know if you saw it. I, I gave it to Mario. It could be up in the little top, but the daily caller just showed the subpoena. They subpoenaed all my social media when I came forward. I'm just a regular citizen, but they, they did it under sealed warrants and there's a sealed case. I don't even know what it's about other than I'm being investigated simply because I came Disgusting. forward. And Biden. So what this is showing is, and I'm speaking to you now, you know, with my lawyer hat on, is is what Ian pointed out. This isn't just rumors, this isn't just like people saying or colluding and talking about it. It's actual receipts of showing um, what what prosecutors look for is a pattern of a pattern of behavior and also receipts. It shows when, why, where, and also the motive of how the, the DNC and the Biden campaign um, and then the Biden administration colluded with intelligence agencies. Now that's very key because then you get into the constitutional rights and the intelligence um, community, they take, you know, and just like Biden when he, you know, in his administration, they took an oath to uphold the constitution and they violated that oath. And that's what Elon Musk pointed out in his tweet. That's why this is very important because this is historical. This will go down in history and it's going to take a while for it all to unravel. But Elon Musk, you know, I don't know him personally, but he is heroic for doing this because he's coming up against a huge power machine that might affect all his other businesses because of his government contracts. Because he's, he's exposing that the intelligence community behind the scenes violated U.S. citizens' right to choose their own political candidate by suppressing information that was of the public interest. So yes, there will be huge um, reveals. And I think probably the reveal today, I don't know, but I'm wondering if it's gonna be more about the intelligence community and that collusion as well as corporate media. Now the corporate media is, yeah, they use PR firms for. So anyway, that's-, that's, well, that's I, I that's just funny. think it's funny that the, the company that's trying to make it better is the, like, where, when every single crypto channel has been banned off YouTube multiple times, where's our leaks from YouTube? Like, hey guys, can, can you guys stop screwing us, right? Or like when magazines won't accept ads. It's just sad that we only get, the only people leaking data are the people that are trying to help us in the first place, you know? Like we just have Twitter stuff because Elon's nice enough to hook it up. Well, and, and you know, the that's, other point with the correct. DOJ stuff, like in my case, um, I didn't even know that my communications were all being taken under sealed warrants. The only reason I knew is that the Twitter attorney contacted me and said, look, we, ha we had to go to court to tell you that you are under surveillance by your government. And so as a citizen, I didn't even know. And um, so, so I'm just a, a minuscule example of a very big problem. And so they did take all my Twitter, whatever, all my Twitter information, all of it, as well as my Google, my Gmail my Instagram, my Facebook, which I've deleted those apps anyway. But the point is, is that those companies didn't contact me. Only Twitter did. And they had to do court cases and spend thousands to do it. So that must have been under Jack Dorsey. I don't know. But I do know that I've been shadow banned on Twitter when before Elon. Now yeah. I'm not. And I've been suppressed um, because they saw me as a threat and tried to destroy me using intelligence services. So that's what, you, to your point, that's why this is such a big deal. Not just for me, this is for all American citizens. American citizens should not be under surveillance by their government because they're using Twitter and Instagram and Facebook if they're not committing a crime. Simply if they're with the Fourth Amendment. It clearly states that you should be free from unreasonable search and seizure and blanket phishing, like mass surveillance. I mean, Snowden was proved correct. Like he, he was right. There was illegal surveillance going on and then everyone forgot about it. Nothing changed. The important part here is you got two enemies. The government is your enemy. They need fixed. They're doing things they shouldn't be doing and it's not good for them or you. And the companies need fixed. You need competition to breed excellence. Unless we have data portability and unless, unless we have these uh, utilities treated as utilities and broken up and demonopolized, you shouldn't be able to get cancel cultured if three companies ban you. That's not a sustainable way to live. So we've got two enemies here. One is the company monopolies, which are emergent. They're not in Facebook's case. They're not emergent. They buy every competitor. And they're also government uh, overreach. And they're two enemies, not, not one. 
Spike, I'll guys, let you, Spike, are, I saw you, I saw you quickly, Spike, I saw you unmute a couple of times, man, I'll give you the mic, I know it's your first time on stage, I appreciate yeah, being and here. Yeah, and I appreciate that, really the only thing I was going to add to this is that you're not going to see any kind of substantive change unless you have uh, the public support behind it, and that's going to require these kinds of disclosures happening more and more, which is why I'm hopeful that this isn't just day two of Twitter files, but that we're going into multiple days of Twitter files, releases on all sorts of different things in every single sector of society, showing how Twitter and no doubt every other big tech company has been colluding directly with government to suppress information and to essentially exile and blackball people from the internet space who give dissenting voices. I hope one of the upcoming ones is going to be on the COVID regimes and the lockdowns and, and mandates and suppression of any question as to the origins of COVID or uh, wherever this goes, the longer this goes on, the more people uh, have to be exposed to the reality that this was not a one-off thing. This was not, you know, don't believe your lying eyes. This has always been happening, and there's a, a substantial proof of it, and that it's happening on all these different things as well. I hope, I hope we're going to be talking about day 130 of Twitter files. So, Absolutely. so, so Spike, I whilst I uh, appreciate your point, I, I think we should mm. draw a limitation to too many different things. Um, I certainly a degree of, you know, government suppression or, uh, I don't know, shall we say um, questionable action, um, over certain policies, but I, I, each case is very different, and I think we should treat them in isolation. Um, when and if certain files were to be released on COVID, on electoral issues, on uh, the suppression of certain speech, even and basic on Twitter, things, right? Even even I even basic a, things yeah. like journalists uh, getting Twitter to suspend anyone who was posting the NPC meme, or later on the learn to code meme, right? People were suspended for this. Hundreds. Uh, well, the thousands pepe. of people were suspended for tweeting at journalists. And who made that call? I want to know who made that call, what it was made for, and who demanded it, right? Was it the media that, that you know, was there a, a concerted effort by members of the media altogether emailing them? Or, you know, was this something that someone at Twitter decided to, you know, unilaterally do, right? We need to know these things. And uh, like, like you said, right, it's going to be everything from uh, large stories, whether it was the cover-up of the COVID-19 uh, origins, right? Because we know Zero Hedge was uh, banned for many, many months in 2020 for reporting that there was a large possibility it came from a lab in Wuhan, right? And then months later, they were unbanned without given any explanation. And we need to know. The public needs to know what, what this is about. But one, Guys, one point I, I did notice blowing, during the... Uh, uh, go on, Spike. Just, just, uh, go on, Terry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, guys, so two things. Number one, uh, we're blowing up. And I think once we get to the 10K uh, listeners, uh, we, have a, we have a fair chance to have a, a, a Elon here. Also, I just tweeted uh, precisely that, that, that Elon is best place to, uh, to, to, to be discussing the subject. So if you can just go and retweet uh, my tweet, uh, hopefully that will spam him. Uh, anyways, uh, well, I, I, can I, I add, can I add a, to I that really a, quick? Just a second. Yes. Yeah, sure. Just a second. I, I thought you had a connection. Why? Why do we have to retweet now to get Elon's attention? Well, I don't understand. It came is so that it, it, so that do I don't get spam I... after. Please, can I? Uh, can I? Can we just? I, I'll tell you. Uh, off, That's off, what off, I was please. wondering. And and honestly, don't you think it might be <clears throat> more pertinent to have him in here when he's actually doing the release or after the release in order to do a Q and A? Okay, so look, my, my, uh, I'll tell, uh, I'll tell you, Kim, um, off, off stage, yeah. Yeah, uh, so not... send me, send me a message, Shereen. I can forward it to Kim. Also, Tara, I've been trying for just to tell everyone, I've been trying to bring up Tara as co-host for the last 20, 30 minutes. Kim can't either, so I just want to give her a massive shout out, and I'll keep trying to bring you as a co-host, Tara. I'm really sorry. Um, and I've got it's two phones logged into Mario. the space. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, it. No, it's, it's, it's Mario's fault. Let's, <laughs> Let's blame you on Mario. Let's blame you on Mario. They it's need not, some revamping for it's sure. Marvelous. It's Mario. So, by the way, we don't need to tweet anything at Elon. You don't need to retweet anything. He knows we're here. Ian is here. I'm yes. here. He's listening to the stuff. Exactly. So don't he worry. Does. He does. If he wants you know, to join, just, he'll just join. Chill. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Yeah. yeah, no big deal. So here's the thing, guys. What's very, what's very tricky for him now is that, you know, imagine being in a position where you are running a company and you are uh, opening a can of worms, and then you just, you just purchased the company, okay? And there was no, uh, no like, uh, clear evidence of, 
of wrongdoing in the company when uh, when there was uh, due diligence done on it, right? So he didn't know that there was any massive illegal activity or wrongdoing by the hey, company. Can you do me a favor, Thierry? Can you, can, you, can you just stop talking for Elon? If Elon wants to talk about it, he no. will come up. He doesn't need you to be like his bodyguard, you know. Just chill and uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but, but what I'm saying is, imagine that you, you are, um, you are you, you, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. That's what I'm kind of saying, okay? I disagree. Uh, is, is this that, is exactly what he wanted. No, no. No, no. Okay, but but the thing is, like, also, like, if, Thierry, just if, read, read the room. Let it be. Read the room. Let's let's go on. Look, and correct. On Elon gets screwed by the Biden administration every single day. He is the largest new car manufacturer in a hundred or two hundred years in the United States. He doesn't get invited to the electronic vehicle summits. Like he doesn't exist. He's the only game in town, and the Biden administration pretends he's not even there. So like and the media he, hates them. The media yeah, hates and, them. You can literally part, tweet at me and they will write an article about how he tweeted at me and then you know they repeat every single rumor they heard about either of us. It's insane. It doesn't really matter. Like he doesn't care, right? He just yeah. doesn't give a shit about these people because like I like I said to him publicly and he agreed with me, it's like there's no point in trying to play their game or, or placating them because they're gonna hate you regardless. Fuck them, fuck the activists, right? If you want, I mean, they did the same. The car right. media did the same thing to him, and when exactly. Tesla cars came out, like it literally, Top Gear ran it out of battery on their own just to try and make it look bad, and he had to sue Top Gear for tr literally savaging his new car company and making the car look worse than necessary. And I so, mean, Clark, so he doesn't buy ads. Guys, so he doesn't. Nice. He doesn't buy ads. He's the only car company that doesn't buy ads. So guess who doesn't make money on him? The advertising companies, the magazines, but because the stuff's so good, they have to cover it for free anyway. So Elon is the ad. That's because he's the ad, and he knows how to do it. The, he has a very simple explanation why Elon is doing this. Elon can't stand bullies. Elon stands up to bullies, and he also doesn't like injustice. You know, so he is putting everything on the line uh, to change things because he, he's a smart guy. He sees exactly what's going on. He knows what's uh, wrong in society. He knows what needs to happen. So humanity has a chance to move forward without all of these restrictions into our human rights and, you know, stifling of free speech. So what he's doing here is a great service uh, to humanity. And if he wants to come up and talk about it, let him talk about it. But let's not talk about him, you know, and how we have to protect him and all that. He knows exactly what the fuck he's he doing. He knows, yeah. So he's been in the scene for years too. and years and years. You know, there's, he's going to really be quick, upset. Uh, could I request to have ALX speak if if that's possible? I'm so sorry if Richard was speaking. I can't hear him for whatever reason. Um, but ALX, or I don't know if you go by Alex, but he was one of the accounts that was wrongfully suspended from Twitter. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long ago, but he was just recently reinstated by Elon. And I, w I would really love to hear his take on he's all a of this. POW. That, that's what he is. I think he called yep. himself that <laughs> in a podcast recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was not my idea for the Chiron, but I got roasted. But it's awful. For it's it. cringy. Oh, it's so cringy. it's so that was not my that was not my, <laughs> my take for the Chiron, but I enjoyed it. It was pretty funny. It's pretty uh, funny but yeah, yeah. anyway, yeah. Anyway, so um, so what I think is interesting is so the James Woods tweet that was uh, requested at the behest of the DNC to be taken down. Uh, I know it had to do with the Hunter Biden thing, but he used that same template that um, I believe that I was suspended for, but Twitter claims I was not. It was that I side with Joe thing. That was my last tweet before I was suspended, like 20 minutes before I was suspended. I tweeted that um, with like Xi Jinping, and I thought like it was a funny meme. And then I saw like Mike Cernovich like comment on it, and he said, oh this this watch the media claim this is manipulated media or something and like use it to be sus like get suspended um but yeah so yesterday's drop kind of not only with the hunter biden stuff but i want to know and i'm i'm interested if this is going to be covered in like the second drop i want to know the extent of like how many users that the dnc and the biden campaign actually requested to be taken down how many were granted and I would like to see each of those users like notified by Twitter. Uh, I think they have a right to know if 
they were suspended at the behest of the Biden campaign or the DNC or uh, and if it was honored especially. But in general, um, I, I think they should they should have a right to know. I think I think that there's I wish I were more of a lawyer in this case, but there's a big difference between the administration that's in office and has been elected and the guys talking crap that weren't elected that just happened to be a club of people. So the DNC is just a club of people. So unless they're elected, I don't think you're going to have any teeth to like stop them from lobbying to get everyone they don't like banned. Well, this is this is another thing, too. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that it's limited to before uh, Biden got in office. Uh, the Biden campaign and the DNC. If this was going on before, and we already know with the lawsuits uh, coming out over the COVID uh, misinformation, that there was active coordination between uh, the Biden administration and and Twitter. Um, so again, this could just be, you know, a pretext and just you know coming before. Again, this is this is one drop. We do not know what the extent of all of this is, and this is only you know having to do with the Hunter Biden stuff. So well, I'm, I'm not, point to add I'm there too saying, is the, yeah. the the DNC is a uh, representative body of a whole bunch of people that are elected representatives usually. So uh, typically speaking, that you know even those people in, in Congress, if they were asking for this, that's an issue. I think I think by the way, just as a side note, I'm not a fan of Biden or the idea of doubling the capital gains tax rate or some of the other awesome ideas I've heard from that administration. But uh, savaging the dude for what his kid did. Unless there's direct evidence that he's involved, it's kind of it's kind of scammy, right? Oh, you got right. a crappy there, there, you have to, there you have to. That's step a can up. of worms. We're, we're not talking about like his drug habit. That's 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 a talking point. Yeah, no one cares about by that. the corporate media. What the, what we're talking about is his role in Burisma when he wasn't qualified. What we're talking about is when Biden was vice president and basically used his position to get financial gain for his immediate family. Influence peddling, right? The only reason yes. his son and, got the position of exactly. charisma yeah. and, and with that the Chinese is, company, the Chinese bank, was because his dad was vice president. That's the only reason, because he had no qualifications to fill those roles. I mean, we're talking about $83,000 a month from a Ukrainian energy company. And, you know, months later, guess what happens, right? Uh, all these uh, favors suddenly start going to Ukraine. That's very interesting. Now, there's no hard evidence that these things are connected. But, you know, it's quite obvious why his son got those positions, at the very least. Well, when, well there's one... I think, um, Ian, there's the email. There's the email that violates the emollients clause of the Constitution. Sarah, if, even more from, importantly, uh, there is a former partner of uh, Hunter Biden who set up the company with him that benefited from all of these investments out of China, uh, you know, Ukraine and so on. And he went uh, on television and told his side of the story that Joe Biden was very much involved in these businesses, that he was the big guy who was going to get a 10 percent share out of all of these uh, dealings and transactions. And this guy came forward with concrete evidence, emails and everything. And the FBI literally refused uh, to interview him uh, and looked the other way. And uh, just recently, again, he's been uh, at uh, at Fox with um, uh, Tucker Carlson to explain that, you know, none of the stuff that he has revealed, including hard evidence in writing, emails, uh, have been reviewed. Exactly, exactly. And I think the bigger issue here is the bigger picture issue is how the Biden campaign in 2020 was using their position to influence the conversation via social media, Twitter being one of those platforms, by siphoning it, controlling it and suppressing it. And that has to be looked at. Also part of the that's problem, a, too. That's was... a party institution um, overriding democratic process. Like you could, you could argue that, you know, if, if you have an elected uh, party and then they're having influence on the way that these companies operate, you could, I mean, at least it seems like people are arguing it's up to these companies to decide whether to collaborate with these institutions as in their private companies. So they have the right to decide what's on their platform or not, which I don't think actually um, relates to their responsibility, just like you have other types of utilities like energy utilities that are regulated specifically because of their importance to the public. 
and the fact that the public needs these services, this is this is the big thing that actually has to be addressed with social media companies is they have this responsibility because they determine public discourse and they determine elections. So when you have a campaign of a presidential party having influence over what can be discussed on social media, that's where you create a situation where the embedded power in these party institutions is affecting an election because they are able to speak directly to a social media company um, before they've been elected. And you're seeing this where you have two parties that are capable of influencing in this way. And the boundaries of those two parties as an establishment in terms of the people who are included in that industry of politics and not determines who has influence over what is allowed on social media. So at a foundational level, this is a violation of First Amendment right. Absolutely, Tim. And, you know, as a customer, like I'm a U.S. citizen, here I was, my information taken under sealed warrants by a government agency when I didn't commit a crime. I simply told of a crime, something that happened to me. So I think for everyone, for all U.S. citizens, just regular citizens, how how can we have trust and faith in these social media companies if they're simply colluding with um, political power and with campaigns or with you know, the governing, you know, at the time, whether it be about COVID or in my case, it was a whistleblowing case or an, or the Hunter Biden laptop. It doesn't matter what the subject matter is. The fact is the intelligence communities should not have the overreach to reach into private companies and take personal data without permission and without. I think we lost. <clears throat> Sorry about that, Tara. I think we lost Kim. Uh, I don't know if he's reconnecting Mario or you're able to get him back up here. Uh, yeah, I'll DM him now. Kim, can you hear me? Oh, I was just going to offer to do a quick reset of the room and just remind people that yesterday it was around this time uh, that the files dropped, I believe. So uh, it could be happening soon. Um, also, if you're liking what you hear in here, make sure you're following the host, Mario, so you can catch his spaces in the future. And make sure you retweet the space so others see hey, it. You follow, yes, you gotta follow, please, you gotta please. follow, you gotta follow Tara. You gotta follow Tara. She deserves a lot of credit for making this happen. And Kim, are you back? As you see, you come up again. So, the, uh, so there's something now. really, uh, really weird going on here. So every time I speak and I raise important issues, I get kicked from the space. And when I when I join back, um, it doesn't let me speak or do anything. So I really had to like restart my phone and everything it's like really really do you know strange. kim i i uh, so i you know me i'm i'm i, I don't like i'm not a i wouldn't say conspiracy theorist but i don't like to make up stories and i want to tell you something though that i haven't spoken about remember when the hunter biden thing happened a lot of the press was asking me what happened i've had a lot of glitches on twitter spaces like today i can't co-host tara i'll try again soon it could work some speakers we can't bring up i hope jack is up jack levin i've been trying to bring him up for a while jack um, yeah Oh, so. sick. Perfect. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so Kim, what happened, and, and I haven't said this to anyone yet except my, my team, when with the Hunter Biden thing, we had a glitch that we've never had before. I've done dozens, maybe a hundred spaces plus. Never had this glitch. So while, when it started getting in the a bit... room, guys, just so you know. Oh, sick. All right, cool. I'll, I'll invite him up. Um, hopefully it doesn't glitch. When, when Elon was here last time, I brought him up as a co-host and it... Um, it glitched. Um, yeah, so I just then invite him as a speaker more. because co-hosting is very glitchy. Yeah, yeah I would him. make an account that size. It's better just Elon's a speaker. I, I think it would be. Yeah, I've just uh, I've just sent him through a speaker invite. Um, so Elon, I hope it works. Um, yeah. So what happened with the Hunter Biden when he was on stage is it started glitching for me—a glitch I've never had before. Again, I'm not making theories. It could just be a glitch. But when it started getting a bit heated, um, and one of the speakers asked a question we weren't allowed to ask, it started muting and unmuting everyone. No, first it kicked. So it was, it was Hunter and uh, someone that works with him. It, we had many other speakers. None of them were removed except the person that works with with Hunter. He was removed first, Richard, I think, Richard something. And then the, Hunter was removed second, right after, within seconds, while all our mu uh, mics were muting, unmuting, muting, unmuting, nonstop. And then we closed the space, did it again. We never have a glitch when we do it again. Same issue happened again. Um, and someone started, you know, an analyst told me, Mario, there's actually something fishy happening. So I don't think it's happening now, Kim, to you. And maybe it was a glitch back then. Never brought it up. But it was a very, 
uh, well-timed glitch, and then well, after maybe five minutes in a work. Mario, anymore. just just to be on the other side, like you know, I'm a bit, I have a different position to some other speakers here on certain things. It's happened to me as well, so I, I think it's a, a technical. So error. yeah, I think I think I think I think it is technical error. It happened to me and all other speakers. So it would mute, unmute, mute, unmute, nonstop, and we started the space again. Did it never? This error never happened before. Other errors happen on a regular basis. Again, Piotr, as I said, it could very well be just a glitch. Um, just a very ironic and well-timed uh, glitch. Um, but anyway, oh, I, I think it's uh, important Kim, to raise it. Uh, I think it's important to raise it. Sorry, go ahead. Your, please, Kim, uh, check your direct messages because um, I sent you a bunch of them. Uh, and Elon, I know that uh, you're, you're listening now. So it'd be great. That, that's, that, that's what I was saying. It'd be great if you could come on stage because you, we will be able to be a little bit more truthful and factual about what is going on instead of allowing speculations regarding the Twitter files, I think you're in the best position, um, knowing what you know, to, uh, to have a truthful and mindful conversation. So if you could join, uh, Mario, you're sending him the invite, I guess. Uh, I have, yeah, yeah, I've, uh, I've sent okay. him maybe, the Maybe he can at least let us know what time the next drop will be so we can get nice. Twitter numbers at an all-time high again. Um, so, Alex, I know you have your hand up, but I'll try to invite Elon. I go By ahead. the way, I tried to move Elon okay. up just now. It says uh, error. He cannot be moved. So, the, the app. Oh, it's him. working. Now, my invite is working from my end. Um, but, yeah, I'll keep trying. Um, go ahead, And I'll DM him on. Or Elon, can, yeah, I can't DM you. You can DM me if it's not working for you. Um, sorry, go ahead, uh, uh, Alex. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to go back to a point that Richard made when he said that. Uh, he doesn't care about like the activities of Biden's son and um, like his drug abuse. I think that what I care greatly. I just said I wanted no, evidence no. of a tie. That's okay. So, but this is this is my point though. I think that overall demonstrates the point of why it's so important that this story got out is because a lot of people might have that opinion. They might say that. Hey, you lost the speaker now. Okay, yeah. Elon, up on this <laughs> Elon, Elon, can you hear us? Awesome. Elon, can you hear us? I think he's up. Uh, he it takes a while to load. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep, there I we can hear you now. I don't miss Fantastic. Uh, sorry, guys. I think there's like uh, maybe some glitches in the spaces that we need to fix. Um, I'll, I'll dig into it next week. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, on the Twitter file stuff, I mean, the, the idea here is simply to come clean on everything that has happened in the past in order to have a, you know, build public trust for the future. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's essential. Like, why, why should people believe Twitter in the future if, if Twitter does not come clean about the past? That's what it comes down to. So it's it's just, uh, you know, so I've given Matt to Tidy, and then uh, just recently, uh, actually just, just about an hour ago, Barry Weiss, uh, access to all, all Twitter documents. So it's like unfettered access to, to anything. And this is not like a, you know, North Korean tour guide situation. This is, uh, <laughs> you, you get to go anywhere you want, whenever you want, wherever you want, however you want. So uh, I'm not like, you know, uh, controlling the narrative or I, I didn't, you know, Matt's, I was seeing Matt's tweets as he was tweeting them. So I'm like, I was just as eager to see them as everybody else. Um, and I think Matt, Matt, Matt did a great job. I mean, there are a few cases where uh, I think we should have... Um, Excluded some email addresses. Sorry, Jack. Um, <laughs> Jack at Pizza is now, uh, you know, it might need a different email address. But um, so we have to need, need to, you know, not have uh, email addresses in there. And I think we need to post more uh, actual source documents um, so then people can draw their own conclusions. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just obvious that there's been a lot of uh, control of information, suppression of, of, of information, including things that affected elections and that just all needs to be, you know, it's, it's kind of like this friggin' Stasi files, you know, I'm like at the point you, you just want to have the have this stuff out there. So, uh, so, so Elon, I have a I have a very blunt question for you then. Um, given the past few days over Yi and what we're talking about, the freedom of expression and people want to ask hard questions. So we've had one side where we've now seen you freeze his account again. But now you're releasing information that, you know, about the freedom of expression. So how are you going to balance the level to which you speak about the freedom of expression on uh, Twitter? Yeah, well, I think... If that makes sense. Sure. Um, the, you know, with Kanye, um, 
it's, it's obviously a difficult subject. Um, but that, that was a case where it was like, uh, you know, it, where that was my decision. But I think it's important that people know, okay, that was my decision. Because um, at a certain point, you have to say, what is incitement to violence? Because that, that is against the law in the U.S. You, you can't just have a, you know, form a club, uh, let's go murder someone club. Um, you know, that's not actually legal. So uh, the question is, what is incitement to violence? And I think, um, you know, posting swastikas in, in what is obviously not a, you know, good way uh, is an incitement to violence. I, I personally wanted to punch uh, Kanye, so uh, that, would, that was definitely inciting me to violence. Um, so, uh, you know, that's not cool. Just, well, just, to, just, just to hang on, but you, you mentioned in a good way. Well, no, it's just that like, it just could, to make it could sense. be like an analysis of the Second World War or something, you know. Uh, that's, a histor- that's a history drama or whatever, you know. Or, it's contextual. Yeah, right? yeah it, like, it's, it's, like, it's like, okay, you know, like let's live a battlefield or something and that's got, you know, this, this you know, uh, so some sort of, you know, uh, war history thing. I, I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Then that, that would be okay. But um, yeah, it, it has to be contextual. I mean, if he's... 